Several years ago, the consultants at A.T. Kearney came up with a very interesting uh, methodology for evaluating the uh, benefits that a company uh, gets from its investment in procurement talent and technology. Uh, it's called ROSMA, or Return on Supply Chain Management Assets. Uh, over the last couple of years, uh, A.T. Kearney has turned this into a very interesting report uh, released in conjunction with the ISM here in the United States and an organization called SIPS in the Commonwealth countries uh, that provides some great insight into the kind of differences that leaders get in terms of their leverage of supply, uh, supply management investment versus the middle of the pack and the laggard. We're very pleased to have here today Joseph Radabaugh from A.T. Kearney. He's uh, coming to us from uh, his home office in the Lake Forest north of Chicago to talk about the 2015 report, the second such report that's been issued. Uh, Joseph, thanks so much for joining us today here on the Supply Chain Television Channel. And thanks, Dan, for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to, to contribute to Supply Chain Digest. Well, thank you very much. So, you know, I, I've read the last two years' reports. I'm very uh, intrigued uh, on the findings uh, in both years, uh, fairly consi you know, very consistent, obviously. Uh, I get, you know, how you measure the cost of procurement in terms of what you're paying your, your people and uh, the investment you're making in te technologies and related areas. I don't completely understand how you're measuring the return aspect of it. And before we get into the meat of this year's report, can you just shed some light on how that is calculated? Okay. So, first and foremost, uh, ROSMA is a productivity management framework, and its real value is what the Germans refer to as a steering mechanism. And it's really helpful because CFOs get it, they like it, and it helps the partnership between CFOs and CPOs really work much better. And it's a derivative of the 1926 DuPont return on net assets financial model, which is another reason the CFO community likes it. So we developed it in 2009 with a number of clients and worked together in some pilots to prove it and to shape it. And that's really the origin. And we've been benchmarking it ever since. So, you know, the calculation uh, is highlighted in, in, in our white papers, which you can access uh, either through AT Kearney or ISM or SIPS. But essentially, the, the numerator, you know, what, what's created is really the interplay of how much spend is managed how much of it is taken to market in a given time period, what they achieve in unit cost reduction, the compliance rate, and additional benefits besides unit costs, for example, like financing terms or specification reduction and so, so forth. And the, the aggregation of, of those variables is the results delivered, and we only count hard benefits, no cost avoidance, soft savings. Finance guys are not interested in that. And we just divide it by uh, what you report as your operating expenses for your team and any capital investments you might have that, that are on the books, for example, on technology and so forth for the team. And as a result, you, know, you, you want to get your kind of rock score, but you also have visibility into all those different drivers. Okay, very good. Well, you know, kind of the headline news, if you will, from this year's report, as well as last year's report, is just the remarkable difference in the return the leading companies are getting between the average company and sort of the laggards. Uh, what can you share with us there in terms of the, the, the significant amount of difference there is between those different groups? Well, at, at the highest level, uh, the, varia the, the variation across groups is, is, as you can tell, is huge. And we found that ever since we started benchmarking it, and it's independent of size of company, industry, or geography. And I would just, the headline would be procurement is not managed like physical supply chain uh, or manufacturing yet. It, it, it's lagging in process management skills that, that those functions have. So the reason, in addition to the, you know, it's not managed as, as tightly and as transparently is that across all those drivers, the variation's big. So top performing companies, if you give them, if you invest a dollar in their procurement team, you know, they're giving you seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve dollars back. And it's because they have deep reach into the spend, they, they influence a lot, their velocity is consistently pretty strong, and their yield's a little bit better, and their compliance is higher, and they focus on some breakthrough things also uh, to give them additional benefits. Whereas the laggards sadly have uh, typically very low penetration. They might only have 30, 40 percent uh, effective reach into the spend in terms of governance. Their velocity lags a little bit, their yield lags a little bit, their compliance lags a little bit. So when you put the algebra together, you know, the leaders are, 
you know, eight to 10 X the laggards and twice the average. You know, that's simply amazing. And you think about the competitive advantage that gives those companies versus the middle of the pack and, and the laggards, as you said, it's almost unimaginable. I mean, it's just uh, an incredible delta there uh, that obviously goes a long way to explaining overall company performance. Uh, what are any other kind of key insights uh, coming out of the report, uh, you know, after that sort of headline news? So the leaders can demonstrate break, breakthrough results. And, you know, it, thankfully, the leaders are growing, right? Over time, we're seeing you know that population, their their numbers getting a little bigger, their results are even getting a little bit better. Um, we just have to help, you know, the bottom quartile get out of get out of their their position because you know they're diluted. Yeah, very good. Well, that's some good stuff. We'll put a link uh, to our full supply chain digest article reviewing this report. Uh, some great stuff coming out of this Rosma 2015 report, as we've seen before. Joseph, thanks so much for joining me today. Hey, happy to do it. And I hope uh, you know some of your members find this as an opportunity for their teams to strengthen.